Have you figured out your niche? Are you helping adding value to other people's lives? Then you're in the right place. Welcome to Munira's Musings with your host, co-author of Conversations with Top Real Estate Investors, Volume 3, Munira Zahabi. Greetings from Chicago Land. Thank you so much for being on Munira's Musings. This is yet another edition. And my guest today is Susan Bell. Thank you, Susan, for being here. Thanks for having me. You are welcome. So Susan is going to talk about how she coaches massage therapists. Now, I know that massage therapists go to school and then they come and work on you. However, she teaches something to them that we don't know about. So we want to know what she teaches. Curious minds want to know, Susan. But before we get started, I want to tell you a little bit about me. Thank you so much for being on this show. And for those of you watching, thank you so much for watching. If you like you know, this show, please share and subscribe to this channel. Also, if you want to be a guest on my show, please let me know and we can talk. Um, Manira's musings came about when I saw people doing extraordinary things and it made me think I need to, in my own way, find these people and expose them in my own way. So this is what I do. And this way I promote them because it is in giving that I wish. And this is what I do best. I'm also the niche navigator and I help people find their niches. People who are in transition, people who are looking to transition, people who have laid you know, who are laid off and want to do something else and to be up market and not sure what you want to do. I'm the person that talks to you. And in four weeks, you'll have a solid foundation of your niche because that's what's going to give you the founding of your business. And without further ado, thank you, Susan. Thank you so much for being on my show. Well, thanks for having You're me. Welcome. Tell, us a little, tell us a little bit about yourself. Oh my goodness. Well, I spent a lot of time in um, real estate. I'm an entrepreneur. I've started business. I've sold businesses. I've given them away. But I wanted to kind of change my direction and go into massage therapy around 2013 and became a massage therapist and right out of school opened my own massage office and realized very quickly that a lot of the students that I went to school with who also had ambitions to open their own massage therapy studio couldn't do so. They didn't have sales background. I was really lucky in that I was a professional gone massage therapist as opposed to people who are a massage therapist trying to become professional. And they wind up lost in the corporate world of massage and get burnt out and make little money compared to other therapists who can start their own business and live off of their massage money without working 30, 40, 50 hours a week. So my niche kind of at this point is I have a thriving office with that is run by a manager and I am here to coach other massage therapists into growing their own massage therapy business and that's what I do. So you help them find business aspect of it. Right. When we go to massage school, we learn a lot about technique. We learn a lot about client care and, and, our, and physical bodies, but we don't really, they don't really focus a lot on the business end of things. They kind of gloss over a lot of generic things about business, but they don't really teach you how to set up your business and how to market effectively. And a lot of therapists are under the impression that, oh, well, once you get a massage from me, you're going to love me and want to come back. And yes, you may have a great touch and you may be a great massage therapist, but there's more to it than that. That would be like walking into a burger place and just assuming that people are going to love the burger and never come back. But yet we always see ads for burgers and we always see ads for restaurants. So uh, your skills don't always sell themselves. And in a sea of advertising, you need to get yourself out there as well. That's awesome. See, that's the, the basis of any business because that you know marketing your business is a big thing and then when you market it and you have clientele what is it that you do with it right that's a big thing mm -hmm. um, it, 
in your line of work, do you mas- massage people now or do you just run your business? Right now, I don't do massage. I have, I've been out of the office for two years, and I opened Awesome Massage Coach, which is on Facebook, uh, and AwesomeMassageCoach.com, which is uh, where you can go to find my partner and I. And basically, what I do is um, put out marketing and teach therapists how to be business-minded and grow their business. So I am out of the massage office, um, much too many client sadness <laughs> but uh right now i'm actually out working with massage therapists and really excited about teaching massage therapists how to grow their business so is it like any other business that you know a massage therapist i mean how different are they from any other business is it the same thing because i know you need to have a brick and mortar place right Mm, some people do a lot of people like we have an office and people come to our office that's one business model you can also have a mobile business I was just coaching this morning and uh, one of our new our new therapists in our group uh, has a mobile business so I was describing for him how to run his mobile business well advantageously we have other people who do chair massage at corporate events so you don't you can be mobile you don't necessarily have to have a brick and mortar business but you do have to have stable consistent marketing no matter which avenue you choose to do massage what are the difficulties that a massage massage therapist faces when when they want to open up their own a lot of times Sure. A lot of times what they'll run into is um, they don't know where to get an office. They, they, they believe, here's, a, here's, a, here's an easy tip for anyone who's a massage therapist or looking to open an office. If you use your schedule properly, you don't need a reception area. When you go and rent office space, you rent by the foot, the square foot. And a lot of times massage therapists think they need not only a massage room, but this huge office space that has a reception area. Well, if you add that those dollars into the square foot rental of your massage space, you're paying for a lot more than you can actually use. Plus, you have to decorate it. You need furniture and decorations and lighting and, and pictures, and that all costs money. You have to focus on uh, your schedule, and if you can use, say, the, the main building's reception area or schedule your people so they're not hanging out in a waiting room, then you don't have to spend that extra money. I'm really all about making more money uh, than you are uh, sending uh, spending. So if you can keep your costs low, uh, then, then you're going to uh, start out really well. And that's, that would be my first suggestion. Um, so a lot of people, when they go to look for an office, they look for something that's grandiose. And that may be something to uh, work up to. But when you start out, you look for something that's functional over fancy. So that would be the first thing that I find. And then second is put systems in place. Understand what your policies are for scheduling. You should always, um, you should always pick the days you're, uh, believe it or not, you should always pick the days you're off before you pick the days you work. And that way, when you have doctor's appointments, when you have to take your car in for an oil change, when you have to take your children to the doctor, uh, you have to go to the school events. You take those days and schedule them off and then consistently schedule your massage days around those. So when someone said to me, Susan, when can I come in and see you? I can give you exact days and exact times as opposed to, well, whenever you want, just come see me. Um, offices, buildings, doctors, they all work by appointment and the best therapist schedules are by appointment. I have to learn that. I'm going to share <laughs> taking that and using it for myself. Because that's true, yeah, because sometimes I have to move things around a lot mm-hmm. because my husband's sick and I have to take him to the doctor a lot. But this is a good tip. I like that. Thank you. Sorry. You're welcome. <laughs> it doesn't apply to massage therapists. It also applies to me and other people who are listening. Thank you. Uh, so th- these are the tips. What is the most? What is the most difficult thing? for a massage therapist to do when starting up their business and how do they solve it? The most difficult thing that I found and most people find, especially when they're starting their own business, is marketing and reaching clients. So bringing in clients and then bringing them in consistently. 
And I've met therapists that have been in the business for 18, 19 years and still have trouble getting clients on a consistent basis. I meet brand new therapists who've just come out of school and obviously have to build the client base. So I would say marketing and rebooking your client, client base is the most difficult challenge that therapists face or any person in any business. I'm sure you have listeners that aren't massage therapists, but run a business and need clients. I see that in groups all the time. Hey, ladies, how do I grow my client base? How do I reach new people? Um, this, is a, this is a particular skill. And, and one of the problems that we all face as entrepreneurs looking to market is that we don't want to come off pushy. We don't want to come off salesy. We don't want to, we don't want people to feel like we're grabbing them by the collar and going, you have to work with me um, or something like that. So there's a, there's a, a balance between I need more clients, but I don't want to go out there and be a salesperson. And that's what a lot of the things that I, I reach and I, and I, that I coach on. How do, how do people find you and where are you located? Um, I live in Plano, Texas, and if there are any massage therapists in the Plano area or visiting Dallas, um, Texas, they're more than welcome to look me up, uh, and I'll probably take them to lunch because I love lunch, and they can come see our office, and um, we give coaching uh, live. You might even wind up on one of my shows, and um, so anyone who is in Texas or, or near Texas or visiting is welcome to check us out. Um, they can find me on Facebook at Awesome Massage Coach. It's a Facebook page, and there's a Facebook group attached to it. And then from there, and I do live coaching in there every Friday at 10 a.m. So if you're a massage therapist or an entrepreneur and you want to track me down, you can do so that way. And then we have a paid subscription group where we actually coach um, therapists to grow their business, and we tackle their individual needs in the, in the paid subscription group. So I'm pretty much available on Awesome Massage Coach in Facebook and AwesomeMassageCoach.com. I have one more question. So we, we talked about your whole line of this thing. You said you had you given up, given a businesses and then sold some of the businesses. Can you, can you sh share that journey with us before we end the show? Actually, I, it, was a, it was around 1996 when I was able to become an independent contractor and I worked for a flower company and I was my own boss in, in, hand, in selling fresh cut flowers. And that was an amazing experience as well as a lovely one because I got to work around flowers all the time. And I got to train with the owner of the company and he used to actually give away vases and he would stand in Home Depot and hand empty vases to people. And I would say, what are you, crazy? Why are you giving away a vase? And he said, well, I wouldn't give away the flowers. He says, but if you give away the vessel, then what are they going to do? They're not going to walk home with an empty vase and keep an empty vase on their counter. They're going to come by my flowers over and over. And I, I thought that was brilliant. So learning different things from different people, I learned that from the, the flower grower. Um, in 1998, I was approached by a person who was a marketing expert and the internet was brand new. And he and I created one of the very first web design companies and our niche then was real estate agents. And we, cause I had my real estate license and we were focused on how do you get somebody, I was in Arizona, how do you get someone in Virginia to understand the beauty of Phoenix? Because everyone thinks desert and they think it was horribly boring and not green. And I'm like, this place is gorgeous. Why don't people understand this? And so we, we created amazing websites in 1998, believe it or not. Um, and then I, I sold that company in 2002 and went into real estate full time and had a brokerage and sold houses and I sold properties to investment groups. So I used to speak um, I used to speak to 200, 300 people in a, in a meeting room and sell properties. So I learned how to, how to sell and how to communicate and how to, uh, you really, when you sell, it's not a matter of selling, it's a matter of communicating value. When you can communicate value to someone across from you, uh, then they're going to buy. If they can trust you and trust that your product is of quality and that you are of quality, then, then the sale immediately takes place. It's really not a matter of trying to sell you anything. It's a matter of conveying to you that I have something of quality and that it would benefit you. And that's kind of uh, the target that I take. So I had gone into real estate uh, sales and talked to investment clubs and, and made 
six figures in 14 months as far as selling investment properties and then moved into the brokerage and then I moved to, from Phoenix to Dallas where um, I went into real estate a little bit but it wasn't the same market and I had lost the, the, the zeal for it and decided to go into massage because I wanted to actually communicate on a personal level and spent three years in the massage office before I realized that there were a lot of struggling therapists trying to communicate their healing abilities and that's really where I belong. I belong teaching and coaching. Thank you so much for sharing. I look forward to being a guest. But for those of you watching, here's the tip. It doesn't matter where you are in life. You can always take what you have and purpose it to be whatever you want to be. Uh, Susan went from a flower person working in a flower shop to realist to massage therapy. And now she's a coach, you know. So it, it, it doesn't matter where you are. If you have a yearning for some, let's start on it. Thank you so much, Susan. I appreciate it so much that you are on my show. And have a good day till another episode of Munira's Musings. Thank Bye. you for listening to this episode of Munira's Musings with your host, Munira Zahabi. If you enjoyed our show, please share and subscribe to this channel. And for more content, please join our Facebook group,